It's better late than never. I'm about 15 minutes late, but I am here, and we are going to have a Bible study today. It is a good day. Chris is fishing, of course, and I got something in the mail today. I'm going to show you what I decided to do instead of getting a new stove. One Instead of getting a new refrigerator, I'm going to start putting all my produce in my old refrigerator, okay? And my cheese. Two, instead of getting an electric stove so that I can cook faster or cook on a larger pot or skillet, this is what I got. Instead of a stove. It is a burner. And so I got it in the mail yesterday and I haven't opened it. And I thought I would open it in front of y'all. We're going to plug it in and see how fast it is. Now, this is a Quizmax. I put it online on my website. It's under uh, small appliances. If you want to know where it is. Okay. So we're going to see how it works. I had a different on, one on there and I changed it to this one and I'll tell you why. The first one I had on there, the burner was only like seven and a half inches or something like that. Um, this one's burner varies. Okay, it can be a large burner or it can be a smaller burner. So we're going to plug this sucker up and we're going to see how fast it gets hot. And I'm going to hold it. Attention, read this before using. Only magnetically conductive cookwares can be used on the induction cooktop. How to check. Find a little magnet in this box. Stick it on the bottom of the pot. If it sticks, your, your pot can be used. If it does not, it cannot be used. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. This girl probably use everything she wants to on it. Just because that's how I am. But we'll see. I have no idea which one of my pots are magnetized and which ones are not. So I might have to check that out. So I'm going to plug it in over here and just kind of tilt it so y'all can see what it does. Maybe it'll work when it's tilted. We'll see. So, let me get to my plug back here. All my junk on the counter. Got about a million things. It says, the crystal plate is hot. After cooking, please do not touch it with your hand. Okay, there is a max, a minimum. I don't like the way my cord's doing. Let me... Put it behind this jar. Well, you little turkey. Get your butt over there. Okay. There's a max, a minimum. Let's see if there's plastic on this. No. Max, minimum, uh, down and up, select, on and off. So you've got a small burner and a larger burner. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn it on and see if it gets hot fast. What is that on there? So anyway, I can plug this up on the bar, y'all, and fry my okra on it or do things that takes a lot longer. Um, let me see what y'all say in the chat box. My chatter box. It will not work if the pot does not magnetize. It will not even turn on. For real? Are you serious? Well, let me go get a pot. Let's see what's magnetized and what ain't. Okay, these are the things I've probably used the most. Let me see if I can find the... Oh, here's the magnet. Okay, so I probably fry okra. Y'all yeah, got on my pajama pants today. Uh, and I couldn't find my plain. Uh, I have a gray shirt that has a little bit of ruffle on it that matches these pants. 
and um, I couldn't find it. Okay, this is my Viking skillets. It's magnetized. Praise the Lord, because that's probably what I'd use. One of the most ones that I would use are these Viking skillets. Um, cast iron. is usable look at that cast iron now i know some of y'all are like it says you can't use cast iron on the induction cooktop yeah you can you just don't need to like slam it down on top of it or scrub it on the top of it but there's nothing wrong with using it just use it lightly you know so that's good i can use this what is it you can't use all right my green bean pot it sticks. I mean, most of my stuff is probably going to stick then. I can't imagine what wouldn't. Let's see. What else do I have? I know my stainless steel will stick. So I'm good to go, ain't I? Woohoo! All right. So let's turn it on. That got me worried there for a minute. I have to admit. And I will see how fast it gets hot. Are you ready? Here, just let me move this out of y'all's way. Let's stand on this side. Okay. On maximum. Power. Select. Do you have to put a pot on it for it to work? Holy smokeolas. Let's try. power y'all have never had one of these i know y'all probably think this girl's crazy but it has a power so it has a, a power button you can go up and down from 200 all the way up to it goes two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen 1800 watts i guess is what it is or 1800 bits of power and so oh my gosh how exciting is that i'm gonna be able to fry some okra up quick y'all think i'm crazy but look i've got okra in the freezer from last year chris says i'm not planting okra because you haven't cooked the okra that we put up in the freezer and i'm like Every time I cook okra, it takes me forever. And so now I'm going to fry some okra today. Heck yeah. How simple is that? And y'all are going to be able to see so good on top of the bar when I cook. Ooh. Okay. I got a new toy. <laughs> I got a new toy. Let's see how much it costs. I can't remember. All right. So, I tried three of my pots that I cook in the most. I know my sales still work. Okay, so let's go. Tammy, don't read directions. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm like a man. My mom always told me I had a mind like a man. All right. Um, what else was I going to do? I was going to tell you how much it cost. If you go to my website and you click on home, I mean, not home, if you go to my website and you click on shop now and then small appliances, you will find it in there. $72.99. Y'all, that's a lot cheaper than me buying a stove. $72.99. Now, you can buy cheaper ones. 
But the reason I bought this one is it goes all the way up to 1800 watts. Not all of them do. So if you want to get you one, if you're if you're like me or you have a small kitchen and you don't have a lot of room um, and you want to have an electric cooktop and you don't want to go all the way out and get you. I have propane, y'all. If I had natural gas, I could cook on my stovetop and it'd be quick enough. But because I have propane, it takes us a minute to cool down. You can hear the fan in it. Because I have propane, it takes me a lot longer to cook something that needs to get really hot. Okay? So, therefore, after going home and using my little electric stove, that little skinny one that really goes in an RV or a camper that Daddy put in my apartment, after using it, it's wonderful. It gets hot so fast. So, because it has a burner on it that just, as soon as you turn it on, it's red. All right? Now, this one's opposite. You have to put something on top of it for it to come on, which I guess is good. Because when I was cooking on the one in my apartment, I would move my stuff off the eye and it would still be blazing hot, you know, and red as a beet. This one won't do that. It has a kid's safety lock on it for cast iron, it says. I don't know what that means. I'll have to look at it. Um... So anyway, it's really good. I'm excited, and I'm going to get to use it. That's my new toy. Now, I got two new toys in the kitchen. You haven't seen me use either one of them. You will be seeing me use this one fast, okay? The other one is a grill. When I went home to see Daddy, my brother had an electric smokeless grill made by ninja now of course you can buy it anywhere you want to buy it but if you're going to buy it even if you were going to go to walmart please go through amazon and buy it through my website i don't even think i put it on there yet but i'll do it as soon as we get off here today i'll make myself a note i keep forgetting um let me write myself a note now i can't remember to do nothing no more don't sit your cast iron inside your nonstick cookware. My husband did that when we were down there the other day. I, I, I reached under to get a skillet and he had my cast iron sitting inside my Viking nonstick skillet. I like to have died. I went, Chris, what are you doing? All right. So post grill. Okay. So anyway, I go to my brother's and he has this cool grill on the counter. And he goes, Tammy, you're going to love this thing. I'm an avid griller, and I love this thing. Now, if you use gas to grill, it's better than doing that. If you like to use charcoal, of course, it's not going to have a charcoal flavor. But it cooks very precise, very good. And it grills it. It grills it. So if you are used to using a gas grill, and you don't want to go outside and light the gas, or you want to be able to grill when it's raining, or you're like me when you're stuck at home all the time and your husband's gone, or maybe you don't have somebody there with you, and you really want to grill something because it's healthy, but you don't want to go outside. It's wonderful. It's a smokeless grill, and it's a ninja. And I will put it on the website, and I'm going to cook on it too. Now, I know everybody can't get these gadgets. But a lot of you have electric stoves, which is the same thing as this is. And not everybody can get a grill um, for the inside of their house. But if you can, it's very convenient. I know I'm going to use it. I've already used it for fish, shrimp, corn, chicken. Me and Chris grilled chicken Sunday. Okay. So anyway, that's all there is to it. And um, y'all will see me using them pretty soon. Um, and then, that's it. Only thing else I did is yesterday, Chris said, do you want to go to Lowe's with me? And I said, yes. And after he put those spikes out there for the trees, for the citrus trees, I decided I wanted some plant food spikes. And he thinks I'm crazy. But I'm so envious of my sister because I went there. And she has the most beautiful indoor plants you've ever seen. And she says it's the window that they're in. 
but my plants are so pitiful and they never look that pretty. So I decided they had orchid ones, but I got these because this is supposed to be for flowering and foliage house plants. So anyway, I'm going to stick these in all my plants inside and outside and see if it helps so many. Let me know if you've ever used miracle Grow indoor plant food spikes. I will read the directions on this, okay? <laughs> because I don't want to hurt my plants. Um, I checked my sugar this morning. I'm going to check it one more time. And I want y'all to tell me what you think about the numbers. Then we're going to do Bible study. You never know what I'm going to do. All right. I've had two cups of coffee this morning with creamer, which has sugar in it. But I did use, in order to get even sweeter than that, I did use some uh, monk fruit, which is sugar-free sugar. All right. I don't, as far as I know, have diabetes or pre-diabetes, but because of all my um, numbers being kind of weird on my um, blood test, I thought, hey, I'll just start checking myself and keeping a diary so that the next time I go to the doctor, um, he can see what my sugar is running, okay? So, because my dad has diabetes later in life, and all my pretty much all my grandparents, except for my granny, had it. Um, and my papa really didn't live long enough for later diabetes. Okay, here we go. I don't like sticking my finger. Okay. So I'm going to put my little blood on here. It only takes a tiny bit. And y'all tell me what you think. 136. 136 is what it's reading. 136. Is that good? I think it's really good, don't you? We'll do it again just in case something's wrong with that one. I think it's fun. And my finger will still bleed. The reason I did that is because I got up this morning and I took it and it was 32. And I thought, there's no way my sugar's 32. So I took it again, and it was higher. So that's why I'm going to do it twice. I can still press my finger and get a little blood from it. Okay. Let me set it down. 132. It's working. Um, it doesn't hurt every once in a while. Check your device. Make sure it's working right. 132, I think, is a good number. That's really good. See? Normal's 80 to 120 without diabetes. No, it isn't. After you've after you've already drank two cups of coffee. Eighty to one twenty. Oh, that's what they're saying. What is an A1C? Diane says I need an A1C. That's that thing where they check your blood to see if you got diabetes over three months, right? I can, I can have that done, but I just had my blood drawn, and I don't really want to go back. But I'll write that down. A1C. All my little helpers on here that help me out. Okay. Okay, I will do. I know. Y'all are so picky telling me to clean my finger. <laughs> Y'all think I'm going to get an infection. Um. 70 to 100 is the standard now. Yes, it tells the tale. Um, I know, or two hours after eating and drinking. Okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll check it in the morning before I drink anything, because this morning I checked it after my first cup of coffee. Well, I'll tell y'all what it was after my first cup of coffee, and y'all tell me if that's weird. It was 170, like three or four, and now it's dropped to 132. Is that normal for it to go from 170 something and then down to 130 something? Because it's been a while since I drank my coffee, probably. But anyway, um, Vicky says she's taking care of many diabetics. Well, what do you think about that, Vicky? I got up this morning and I took it after I drank my first cup of coffee and it was right after I drank it. 
and it was 170 something and now after I, the last drink of coffee i got was probably about 8 30 and it's 10. okay i eat so much sugar i wouldn't be i wouldn't doubt it but we'll see i'm gonna keep an eye on it i'm in such a good mood today i don't know why um probably because i read the word of god again um besides just doing my bible study it helps me a lot all right uh, plus i'm excited about my little stove over here i think it's going to be really nice in my kitchen all right we're going to start out with bible study and today's bible study we're still talking about jesus in the garden of gethsemane and uh so let me open this up and we'll start March the 22nd. I love any day that's the 22nd because Chris asked me to marry him on the 22nd of November and we got married on April 22nd. So anytime I see the numbers 22, I get, I don't know, it's just nice. And I can tell y'all, but when we were on vacation the last time, um, we actually went up the stairs to eat in this restaurant and they said that will be table 22. And I was so excited. I said, oh, that's her number. And it was a good dinner. It was a mistake house and it was delicious. Okay, today's March the 22nd morning reading. This is Charles Spurgeon's morning reading off of the blueletterbible.org. And it says, and he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. And we're talking about Jesus here. This is out of Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. And he went a little farther kind of got away from the other disciples and he fell on his face and prayed. Okay. There are several instructive features in our savior's prayer in his hour of trial. It was a lonely prayer. He withdrew even from his three favored disciples. Believer, be much in solitary prayer especially in times of trial. Family prayer, social prayer, prayer in the church will not suffice, will not be enough is what he's saying. These are very precious, but the best beaten spice will smoke in your censer in your private devotions where no one hears but God. So lots of times when we are in, excuse, excuse me, a trial, we do reach out to a lot of people and we and some of us go to church and have people pray. Um, but he's telling us here, there's nothing wrong with all of that. And there's a, you know, and it's good, but be in a private devotion with God. And he's saying, take Jesus's example when Jesus was in his most hour of need, he bowed, fell on his face, and prayed to his father. So he's letting, saying to us, let that be exam an example for us if we're in a trial. It was a humble prayer. Luke says he knelt, but another says he fell on his face. When, where then must be your place you humble servant of the great master. So he's saying, are you going to fall on your face? Do you kneel before your God in times of trial? And you should have a place somewhere. Um, what dust and ashes should cover your head? Humility gives us good footing in prayer. There is no hope of frequency with God unless we degrade ourselves that he may exalt us in due time. So he's telling us, don't be proud in prayer. Make sure you bow before God and humble yourself. It says it was, fam it was a family prayer because he cried, Abba, Father. 
you will find it in a stronghold in the day of trial to plead your adoption. You have no rights as a subject. You have surrendered them by your disloyalty, but nothing can pay for a child's right to a father's protection. Be not afraid to say, my father, hear my cry. Observe that it was a preserving prayer. He prayed three times, three times. Cease not until you succeed. Be as, pers as the persistent widow whose continual coming earned what her first request could not win. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Don't give up. Don't give up. And lastly, it was a prayer of acknowledgement. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Yield and God yields. Let it be as God wills and God will determine for the best. Be content to leave your prayer in his hands. Who knows when to give and how to give and what to give and what to withhold. So plead earnestly, persistently, but with humility and acknowledgement. And you shall surely be victorious. So he's telling us here. Be earnest in our prayers, fall on our knees, fall on our face, cry out to God, acknowledge he's your father, surrender in humility to him, and acknowledge that you want his will to be done and not your own. And so he says to plead earnestly, be persistent, don't give up, be hum uh, humble, and acknowledge he's your father, and acknowledge who you are compared to who he is. So humble yourself. Um, I think those are all great, great examples for us to follow. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord that he kneeled before the Father. And he cried out to his father. And remember, Jesus was God. He knew what was coming. But he still cried out to God. And we should too. Um, always. All right. I hope this uh, helps you today. And um, it was great to have everybody here this morning. And I look forward to cooking on my new uh, appliance and I hope that you get to see it and that's it let's go to the Lord in prayer dear Heavenly Father we just thank you we thank you for all of your many blessings and we thank you for this example that Jesus has shown us in the garden kneeling before you in humility thank you for the Bible, the Word of God that helps guide us and shows us how we should live, gives us examples so that we can go to it as our source for answers. May we humble ourselves in times of need and not feel like that our prayer is not as important as someone else's. Lord, help us realize that we are your child and you will listen. I pray for all of the listeners and all of those who are in the path of this bad storm coming through the south. May they all take heed, watch, hide, listen out today. May you keep them safe, Lord. We just thank you for all you do for us in your word and Jesus. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And make sure you pay attention to where the storms are. All right? Love you. And it may be tonight. Bye. See you tomorrow.